Step 2. Multipartite entanglement. In the previous step, we have seen how um, we can establish a bipartite entanglement, that means entanglement only between uh, two nodes and between two qubits. But of course, we can consider also other types of entanglement, namely entanglement between more than two nodes. For example, in a network, we, we may wish to entangle three nodes like this. Then we refer to, to this case as tripartite entanglement. Or it could be entanglement share between four nodes. So a four pytart entanglement. And we can go up and up until we have entanglement between n a number of nodes or we have multipartite entanglement. So let's consider just three qubits uh, as starters. How many basis states are there? We saw that for the case of two qubits, there are four basis states, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Well, you can guess that for the case of three qubits, there are eight basis states. And they're given by all these possibilities. We have uh, the three qubits being 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on and so forth, all the way to 1, 1, 1. And any general pure state can be written as a general superposition of all of these eight basis states. For example, we can write any general pure qubits, uh, three qubit state as follows here, as a superposition of all of these with some arbitrary probability amplitudes given by C1, C2, all the way up to C8. Now, depending on the particular particularities of the superposition that we take, we may end up in a separable state or an entangled state. So let's consider some examples of entangled states. Let's look at all of our possible eight basis states and take a very simple superposition of just the term 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. And to keep things simple, we will consider this superposition to be an equal superposition. So we've got equal chance to be found in 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. Now this state is known as GHZ state and plays a very important role in quantum communication, as we will see shortly. Let's consider a measurement on one of the qubits of the three qubit GHZ state. And let's say that we measure it in the Z basis. And for concreteness, let's just measure qubit one. So here's our three qubit GHZ state. It's an equal superposition of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. With probability of a half, we can get the plus one outcome. That means we project the state of qubit one onto a zero. And if that happens, we can see that we end up with the state of the three qubits collapsing onto the following state. All of them can be found in 0, 0, 0. So we can see that the qubits are correlated. The other possibility is that we measure the outcome minus 1. This happens with equal probability of a half. And then you can see from this expression that the state of all three qubits collapses onto 1, 1, 1. So again, they are correlated. And we saw similar behavior when we were talking about establishing a secret key in entanglement-based QKD. What we are looking for was the scenario where performing measurements in the same basis can establish, um, uh, establish a secret key between two parties. Here you can see that you can do that, uh, do the same thing between three parties, which is why GHZ states are used in quantum communication. In fact, you can see that by doing that, just like in the case for the entanglement-based QKD, measurements consume the entanglement that was shared between the three parties. So by measuring just one qubit in the, um, in the state means the total uh, entanglement is destroyed. And in fact, it doesn't matter which qubit we measure in the Z basis, we would have ended up with the same case, with the same probabilities, if we had measured in uh, the qubit 2 or qubit 3. Now let's move on to a different example known as a W state. Again, here are our uh, eight possible basis states, and this time we will choose a different superposition. We will consider these three states, and we will take an equal superposition of these states. Now the normalization factor is 1 over square root of 3, because we have three states uh, three basis states in the superposition rather than two that we had in the previous example of the GHZ state. And as I said, this is known as the W state. So, how do measurements affect the W state? 
Again, let's measure in the z basis and perform this measurement on qubit 1. What can happen is that with probability 2 thirds, we get the outcome of plus 1, because we have these two contributions from these two terms in the superposition. Therefore, the probability is equal to 2 thirds. When that happens, our first qubit is projected on, onto the state 0, but our remaining two qubits, qubits 2 and 3, uh, remain in an entangled state, and this time they share the maximally entangled Bell pair denoted by phi plus. And the other outcome is the minus outcome of the z measurement on qubit 1, which can happen with probability 1 third, and if that happens, then we just end up in a separable state 1, 0, 0. So we see that unlike in the case of a GHZ state, here we don't necessarily always destroy the entanglement uh, uh, that was initially present in the system. And in this sense, we can say that W state and GHZ state are not equivalent. Now, we have been talking about the various um, uh, correlations that three parties can share. We said that GHZ state, if we measure uh, in the z basis, one of the qubits, all of the entanglement is destroyed. Whereas if we take the w state and we measure, we don't necessarily destroy all of the entanglement. So somehow this tells you that the correlations that are shared with, in these two states are not quite the same. But there must be some constraints on how m correlated the various parties of the state can be. How correlated 1 and 2 are with 3 and so on. So here we have our three qubits, qubits 1, 2, and 3. And they are in some uh, correlated state, maybe in some entangled state. How strongly can various qubits be correlated? Well, that there is a constraint known as monogamy of entanglement, which we have seen uh, uh, in a previous lesson on the E91 protocol, the entanglement based QKD protocol. And we see that there is a trade-off. If two pairs of the qubits are strongly correlated, then their correlation with the third party is limited. In particular, if qubits 1 and 2 are in a maximally entangled state, then we know that the total state must be of this form. We have the maximally entangled state of qubits 1 and 2 tends a product with some arbitrary single qubit state. So we say that uh, uh, qubit 3 is completely uncorrelated with the remainder of the state, meaning qubits 1 and 2. Similarly, if we have maximal entanglement between 1 and 3, then qubit 2 must be completely uncorrelated with the, uh, with the pair 1 and 3. This, uh, this principle of monogamy is one of the most fundamental properties of quantum mechanics. It's unlike anything that exists in classical, uh, uh, classical physics and is one of the cornerstones and building blocks which we use in quantum technologies and particularly in quantum communication. So, we have seen examples of three qubit states. Can we extend the GHZ state and W state to uh, many qubits, let's say n qubits? And of course, we can do that quite easily. The GHZ state for n, uh, n parties or n qubits has the following form. Again, here we pick only two terms, one corresponding to n0000, and the other one we have n1, so 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and we take an equal superposition of them. Notice that the normalization factor uh, here has not changed, even though we have uh, n, n qubits. That's because we only have two terms in the superposition. On the other hand, the W state, for n parties, we have the following superposition of n terms. Therefore, the normalization factor must change to 1 over square root of n. And what it is, is really we have n minus 1 zeros, and then 1, 1. And we place this 1 at uh, all the possible places, and we take the superposition of all the possible cases where we have n minus 1 zeros and a single 1. So we have n qubits and n terms. But this is not the only uh, example of a useful entangled state of many qubits. There are many other examples, but two are extremely important both in quantum computation and quantum communication. Let's say that we have a network of qubits, 
and we prepare every qubit in the state plus. So this is an equal superposition of 1 and 0. And then we apply an entangling gate known as a control Z gate. In the matrix form, it looks something like this. So it's very similar to a C not gate, a control not gate, but this time instead of applying the Pauli X uh, in a controlled way, we are applying the Pauli Z in a controlled way. So if the control qubit is in the state 0, we don't do anything. If it's in a state 1, we apply the Pauli Z matrix. And this gate is entangling and entangles all of the qubits together into, into a multipartite entangled state. And this is the preparation procedure for a state called a graph state, normally denoted by ket g. Now, if the state has a regular lattice structure, we can still refer to it as a graph state, but commonly it's referred to as a cluster state and denoted by ket c. And by regular structure, I mean the following, the following topology like this. Now, graph states and cluster states are very important in quantum computation. They form the resource states for a particular uh, computational model known as measurement-based quantum computation, but they are also very useful in quantum communication where multiple parties are trying to communicate and they are crucial in quantum error correction as well, which, will, which you will see in a different module.